Hey guys, and welcome back to another baby video. Now, I have started this video about 564 times and realized that since I've been taking a bit of a break from YouTube and not making as many videos, that I waffle so much now. <laughs> like cannot get to the point so I'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible it is going to be a fairly long video due to its nature um but I've had loads and loads of requests to do a big beauty buys video um mostly on Instagram and also on my last video that I uploaded on here I made one before I had Riv um basically running through all of the kind of big ticket beauty items that we had bought for her and then i also made one um about i think it was about seven months after she was born basically saying what i thought was worth it and kind of my best and worst big beauty buys um both of those are still online if you want to watch them i'm going to be going over a few of the same products because in this video i'm basically going to be running through what we've got that's new for the new baby and also what we're reusing in terms of like the big beauty items this is a very much requested video to do for second baby to let you guys know kind of like what we loved enough to kind of reuse and what we kept and stuff obviously there's been a fairly big age gap so the age gap between Riv and the new baby is four and a half years so in terms of kind of technology there's been a few things that have developed um, and come along which weren't available when I had Riv which is what has spurred me to buy a few new things is like the tech element uh, but I'll get into that as we go along Anyway, so starting off with things that we have decided to buy um, that are new. Actually, I'm going to do a bit of a disclaimer as well here. I'm lucky enough to be sent lots of things due to the nature of what I do on the internet. You guys, I presume, know this by now because it's been a long time that I've been on the internet. Um, but just to let you guys know, I will disclose everything that's been gifted versus bought. I will disclose in the inf info box below. We didn't say yes to anything this time around unless we really, really, really wanted it and would have bought it ourselves because quite frankly, like we don't need extra baby stuff. We had a lot of stuff with Riv and I feel like times have changed. I've changed in terms of like my kind of consumer um, attitude towards new things. I feel like five years ago, I was very much like amazing. We can have that and that and that and that. And now I'm a bit more conscious of like, hang on, do we really need all of this new stuff coming into the world? Um, so yes, there is that. And I feel like the world has changed in general in terms of sustainability in that past five years as well. Um, and that's actually like reflected in a lot of the products too. I'll get onto that. So new things that we decided to buy this time around. We did get a new like big buggy. And I say big buggy. We went through a few buggies with Riv. I have to say we got sent a few. We bought a few. We sold a few. We gave some to friends. We donated some. We chopped and changed like over the years. And we ended up um, with the Cybex Priam as our main big buggy when she was really little. I then donated that when she got to about 18 months to probably two actually because we didn't use it anymore because we upgraded to well not really upgrade it's kind of downgrade in terms of like flashness but we got a yo-yo as our travel buggy and as she was more mobile she was walking we didn't need like a massive buggy so we essentially just used the baby zen yo-yo for the past two and a half years with her obviously she's not always in a buggy now she's four and a half um but we do still use that if we're traveling through airports or if i'm out shopping all day and she's just got somewhere to sit and got somewhere to stash all my stuff and we have loved the baby zen yo-yo i have to say now I probably wouldn't buy it again if I didn't have it and I wanted a travel buggy. I might go for something like, is it the Jules Air or the Jules, whatever the, the tiny Jules one is, looks really good. There's a really good silver cross one that's just coming out that has a handle that you like pull like a suitcase. But in terms of five years ago, four years ago, um, the yo-yo was like the first and the best and the tiniest travel buggy. Now there's loads available, but that's what we used. We also had the baby jogger summit three which we've also kept and that was like our garden dog walking kind of buggy because normal buggies don't push on like rough rough terrain so where we live we have lots of really uneven fields that we walk around with the dogs and we also have lots of like thick gravel paths not like tiny gravel but like you know like big rocky paths um and our the yo-yo would no way push on them and the cybex didn't push on them either so we ended up getting that and also for running and we use that load so we've kept those two and then we've got a new buggy which i'm really really excited about like i said we got rid of our cybex one we loved it we just didn't need it at the time and it was a really big thing to store 
Um, so what we went for this time is actually the Silver Cross Dune, which is a new buggy. And there's a few reasons why I went for this. Um, we were sent this as well. I'm actually partnering with Silver Cross for um, a few things later on in the year with this buggy, but we had quite a lot of <laughs> we had a lot of brands approach me for um, buggy content. And to be honest, I really 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 did my research into which one I wanted to partner with because I feel like I just didn't want like another massive buggy and I didn't want something that wasn't going to be as good as our yo-yo or whatever for whatever we needed it for right so we went for the dune I love the fact that the fabrics are made from um recycled plastic bottles really nice touch I love the way it looks it's very we actually went for the sand color um and it's kind of I don't know I just really like it I think it's kind of like slightly like traditional looking but at the same time the design is really modern the quality the build quality of it is stunning and I'd never really looked at Silver Cross last time because I kind of associated them with having the like old school prams or umbrella buggies like tiny ones um but I absolutely love it and I love the fact that it is chunky like it feels really really stable and sturdy but it's actually not that big because a lot of them are just absolutely enormous um and also the bassinet is really compact so we went for i think it's called like the compact carry cot that folds up because with the cybex one that we had with rib the bassinet was huge and we never used it some people use the bassinets they get the um sleep approved ones like overnight sleep approved ones and use them for sleeping in which case i get having a big bassinet but for us we used it for a few weeks like around the house and then after that we just used the cybex car seat which i'll get onto in a minute which was our like i think it was like our number one baby product ever um but anyway so that's the buggy we went for this time i'm really excited to like get using it because obviously you can't really like review a buggy before the babies arrive because there's so much that you learn like whilst you're doing it but anyway that's the buggy we went for um, I've actually written everything down because my brain is just like a uh, absolute um, sieve at the moment. It's just like I've got two weeks left till the baby and information just disappears. Um, the other thing that we did get a new version of this time is a bedside crib. Last time we had a snooze pod and actually I think it's really overrated. I think it's overpriced for what it is and it was also quite difficult for us because it didn't go to the height of our bed. So the whole point of the side coming down and it being easy to get your baby out in the night or reach over to your baby, especially if you had a C-section, etc., was completely pointless. So we should have just used a Moses basket or a travel cot, whatever we wanted to use by the bed. This time around, I actually, I, I got this close to going for the snoo and actually to the point where the brand offered to send us the snoo i said yes we got all the way down the line and then i was like actually i've changed my mind i'm so sorry because i feel like the snoo if you don't know what it is it's basically a kind of motorized bassinet that when the baby cries it detects it and it, it kind of helps to soothe them back to sleep by rocking and the concept of it if you have a difficult sleeper um Obviously, it's not designed to like soothe your baby to sleep when they need feeding or changing. You like feed them, change them, and then it helps get them to sleep. That's the whole kind of concept behind it if they are, don't want to go to sleep after being kind of fed and, and changed, etc., in the night. The idea of that, if you have a, a difficult sleeper, I, I get. My problem with it was I didn't want to use it from the start and not knowing what the baby is going to be like because. If we'd have had this with Riv, we wouldn't have needed it. Like, honestly, she was a very good sleeper. We were so lucky with her, I'm aware, because a lot of babies are not like that. Um, and I was just umming and ahhing, like, it's such a contra... It's not controversial in terms of safety-wise, because it's, it's, like, it's safe products, it's, like, approved as safe product, but it's just in terms of, like, does the baby need it? Are you making a rod for your own back by starting off with that? Anyway, so I decided against that, even though they were going to send it, I just didn't... I just didn't feel comfortable taking it if I didn't know that we would need it and use it, etc. Anyway, and I actually ended up buying the Halo Bassinest, which is the one that like swivels, almost like swivels like an office chair, over your bed. It like comes round and then you can move it out the way. It's got a mesh side that comes down. And to me, I just think this is going to be really good because post, I'm having a C-section with this baby as well as I did with River. And I just think post section when you struggle to like get out of bed move around etc you can kind of move it out of the way which we couldn't do with the snooze pod which was just difficult like i'd have to scooch down to the end of the bed and then swing my legs over and get off the bed um whereas this you can kind of maneuver it around also the side coming down i feel like it it, it is the best for us in terms of like 
set up and I'm hoping it's going to be good. It also has an adjustable height so it literally fits over our bed. You can literally like you can put it like right next to you and kind of like sleep around it if you want but um so yeah I went for the Halo Bassiness. That was like a one of the, the main things that we kind of bought this time. Um, the other thing we did buy was a new cot which was totally like not required. It was a completely aesthetic decision. Um, we had the stocky like round cot last time and it just doesn't go this i'm sitting in a baby's room right now and it just didn't go in here both shape wise color everything just it was just wrong it was white everything in here is cream and blue and it just kind of stood out like a sore thumb so we did keep it from riv we used it all the way through to two and a half when she moved to a normal bed um but we ended up giving it to a friend who's just had a baby a couple of weeks ago and we got the Incy interiors brass cot from scandy it's just so beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. And I'm going to be doing a nursery tour. That's the other thing. I'm going to be doing a nursery tour on here very soon. I'm waiting for one last piece of decor, like a major piece of decor that is coming into the room in about a week's time. But I love this cot so much. I wanted something a bit more traditional. I was actually kind of sad they didn't make it in brass. Our one is copper. So they do copper, I think black and pewter. So like grey colour. Um, I wanted brass, so like a golden one instead of like a coppery one but they don't do it so we got the copper it goes fine we've got a lot of other brass accents in this room so the lamp's brass in the corner and the switches are all brass but I don't think it matters too much so we did change to that it is I personally prefer it to the stocky one in terms of like the look of it but it does also turn into like a cot bed so it'll probably do us through until I don't know maybe three four and then the other thing that I actually got sent and I'm not gonna lie, I was like so on the fence about buying one of these because they're, they are expensive, but I wanted one so much because we didn't buy that much stuff for this baby. I'd actually put it on my birthday list. So the baby's due to be born right around my birthday, literally <laughs> within one day of my birthday. So, um, and there's not much stuff, like it's difficult when you've just had a baby, right? There's like, I feel like there's not much stuff that is on my birthday list this year. There's basically like one thing and this. So it was like top of my birthday wish list from Mike. I was like, this is the only thing I want. He was like, you can't ask for something for the baby for your birthday. I was like, yeah, I can, because I have to wear it. Um, and then Artie Pop actually reached out and, and offered to send us one, which I was over the moon about, because obviously they're an expensive item. Um, again, if you guys don't know this brand, this is the box that it came in. Look at this gorgeous box. Actually, I think the lid's the wrong way around. Um, so beautiful they're just like very very gorgeous they're like fashion um baby carriers but they have very very mixed reviews and not in terms of people who have them people who have them tend to love them because they're supposed to be very very comfortable but just from people in terms of are they worth the money because they are expensive like these they start at about 300 the basic ones are like 300 pounds but they do go up to like like 700 pounds for like certain finish like things but um, this is like one of the classic prints. This is the cloud one. I love it so much. It just makes me so happy looking at it. I can't even try it on at the moment because my bump is so big and obviously your bump is quite low and you carry the baby like up here. So I can't like <laughs> get it on basically. So I tried it on Mike. It looks divine. I'm so excited to try it. Everyone that I've spoken to has said they're very very comfortable they are very expensive for what they are but they're very very comfortable to wear we struggle with baby wearing with rip we had a cybex um wrap thing that we didn't get on with she hated it it looked cool but she hated it um and then we switched to an ergo baby which we liked and for ease of use it was good and we do still have that i found it quite uncomfortable on my back though once she got a bit bigger once she got to about six months seven months and she wanted to go in it and she was able to face out she loved it um and you know you take her on dog walks and stuff and she absolutely loved it but it really took its toll on my back i've had back problems since i was like 17 so i'm very like cautious about putting strain on my back because if i irritate it it then sends it onto a, like a bad cycle whereas if i'm quite kind to my back and don't, and don't do things that I know are going to irritate it. It doesn't get annoyed, if you know what I mean. Whereas Mike was fine with it. The baby's currently measuring on the 94th percentile, I think. Chances are he's going to be quite a big boy. <laughs> um, so that was another factor that I was like, I think this might work for us. So we'll see. We'll see how he gets on with it. That was another big, big kind of big beauty, big, big beauty? Big baby item that we decided to go for this time. But we were very lucky to send. Um, another thing that I was beyond excited about because 
I, as soon as I saw these, these were not out when Riv was born. The LV wearable breast pumps, okay? I spent so much time, I loved pumping with Riv actually, and I like quite liked getting kind of organized. I used to pump after I'd fed her at night and then I'd have one extra feed for the next day and then we, we got into such a good routine with it. Um, it actually meant that she took a bottle as well as the breast really well um, and it just worked really really well for us it helped get my supply up after a couple of weeks of breastfeeding and kind of just really helped like it helped us and it worked for us however the pump that I used it was good it was a Philips one it was a plug-in one that you know I don't know if you've if you've never breast pumped before the noise is very much like uh, 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 uh. it's quite loud it's not like just it's not the nicest you feel like you're just a cow um being milked <laughs> just it's very it's very weird anyway so i was really excited when i saw that they had developed a breast pump that could fit in your bra and you could walk around the house and it was silent um i'm very excited to try it um so i have got one of those which has been another like tech advancement since we've had riv which is exciting the other one that i am tempted by and i would love your opinion on it is the owlet sock and i know these have been a bit not necessarily controversial because they essentially like monitor your baby the baby's kind of heart rate um and movement etc yeah it is heart rate and like oxygen levels it's basically like a pulse oximeter for their foot um and they got banned in the states not for anything bad as far as i'm aware i think it was just because they were technically like cl classed as a medical device and they didn't have a license to sell as a medical device it was just as a baby kind of monitoring system so there was like a bit of a labeling issue there i'm sure they will come back because they were really popular and they're still very very popular in europe and still available in europe anyway i've got a few friends that have used them and loved them swear by them but a lot of people are a bit like oh it just makes you worry and does the alarm go off all the time and it's on the same level as when we had riv we got one of the tommy tippy movement sensor monitors um, which we ended up not using after a few weeks because it just kept on like it kept on going off You'd pick her up in the night and go It just it was just annoying and it would wake her up Sometimes it would wake us up and it would be there'd be nothing wrong with it Anyway, I feel like the technology has come on a bit more to the point where I'm tempted to get the outlet sock Let me know what you guys think I've kind of ummed about it and been on the verge of buying it and then changed my mind The other one is the Nanit which is supposed to be really good, but I feel like you have to use their swaddle for that and like mount the camera on the wall so it's like immediately above the baby and obviously if you move around a lot in terms of like if the baby's in our room that's probably not going to be like we wouldn't use that i don't think at the moment we've kept our baby monitor that we had with river which was a phillips one in the end we switched to a phillips one and that was great so we've just kept that for the moment but i'm tempted by the outlet um other things that we have kept and loved the cybex car seat this is actually a bit of both new and old because we've kept our old one but cybex was super kind and sent us the new version of our old car seat as well so now we have two which makes me incredibly happy because they are the best thing ever um and I honestly, if you guys watched any of my previous baby videos, you'll have seen me talk about this car seat. The Cybex, what was the Cloud Q, is now the Cloud Z. They added a few new safety features. You can basically rotate it sideways to take it out of the car, which for me is a game changer, again, with back issues. And post C-section, it's just a lot easier to, like, dunk and then turn them instead of, like, the leaning over to get them in. Because um, they're not, like, the lightest car seat ever. For me, the main thing is still the fact that you take them out of the car and the car seat like expands, it lies flat, so it's a safe like sleeping space for your baby. So if your baby falls asleep in the car, take them out, put it flat, and they can stay there instead of having to take them out and put them in a like on a flat sleeping surface. So um it was the number one thing we recommended to like all of our friends when they had babies and on the internet. I've never heard anyone say anything negative about it, like genuinely everyone that we've recommended it to. And even now when I mention it on Instagram, people are like, oh my God, I bought this because of you. And I love it so much. It's like the best thing ever. It's the best car seat ever. Anyway, we've kept ribs. We have the new one as well. Thank you Cybex for that. Um, one is to go in my car, one is to go in Mike's car, um, which is fantastic because it just means less lugging stuff around, which with one baby is a lot easier with two i feel like it's going to be there's going to be a lot of car seat shuffling about between me and mike because we do use both of our cars like we're not i feel like a lot of families just always use like one car with the kids and then like the other one if you're like going to work or whatever but for us we just we switch between the two of us all the time um so yes that's car seat wise um 
the other thing that actually we're using we're using this time is our mobile plastic moses basket which actually since we've had rib has been bought out by tommy tippy and i think is now sold as a tommy tippy product but it's essentially and has a new name i'll link it it's essentially a plastic ventilated um moses basket so it allows you to wipe it down wash it clean super easy to maintain super easy in pretty much every way like just very lightweight easy to move it's not the best looking thing ever like the definitely the wicker moses baskets are prettier for sure and a lot of my friends that have those i'm like oh should i get one of those i'm like no i don't need it i have this one and it's great um and a lot of people say after you finish having kids you can use them as fantastic wash baskets which is definitely what we'll end up doing another thing that we are reusing this time but we've changed up a little bit as well is um the docker top which used to be called sleepy head when i had riv i think they changed the name well it was always docker top in the states i think but i think they changed the name in the uk because there's been a lot of controversy about how these are not for like overnight sleeping and i think they changed that to like clarify and get sleep out of the name um but basically these are like as i said when i had riv they're expensive for what they are because they're kind of like a glorified changing mat type construction it's just a place to pop your baby when they're awake but they're i feel like these are best between probably one month and five months so before your baby can turn over but when it still has some awake time and wants to kind of you know you want to be interacting with them and chatting to them and playing with toys with them and things like that it's just a cozy like safe place for them to lie not for sleeping like i said don't come at me there's a lot of warnings about these in terms of don't sleep in them they're not like lullaby lullaby tr lullaby trust approved etc um but what we did do we had one with riv like i said they're, they're expensive for what they are and you can get kind of cheaper versions of them um but what we did do this time was get new covers because they did a collaboration with william morris they have this cover and then they also have the strawberry thief print which we got as well we had a couple of covers for riv too because we change them a lot because we uh, we do change we used to change her on it as well which most of the time we put a muslin over but um yeah we end up washing the covers a lot so we have two covers very lucky to be sent the new william morris ones again via scandy born they're so beautiful so much nicer than the ones we had we had like a white one with rim and then like a chevron one um but yeah excited for the new covers of those and again that's something that we've reused from last time um another thing that i loved last time and i'm definitely going to be re reusing is my gem and b changing bag i think mine was the jemima i don't know if they still make this exact model but i really liked it it's just nice like a lot of changing bags are just quite ugly like i don't know the gem and b one's quite expensive because it's leather but my friend also had a really nice one that i think was from cam cam copenhagen i think again they might sell on scandy born i'll link it that was a much cheaper option but really nice but a lot of them are just quite like just not to my taste let's put it that way don't want to offend anyone that likes the calf kids and ones etc but i personally don't really like them um the gem and b one is amazing it's got loads of pockets and i've actually packed it up for the baby's hospital bag if you'd like to see what's in my hospital bag let me know because <laughs> hoping that i'll be able to film a few more videos before baby arrives like i said two weeks to go i cannot wait i'm so excited um so yeah i've packed up that as my hospital bag and definitely will be using it as a baby bag as well because they're just great um the skip hot play mat was the play mat that we had last time i'm not sure if they still sell this i will look online but we loved this because it was so cute it has loads of sausage dogs all over it um i'm actually not sure i got ours out the other day and i'm actually not sure if the music element to it has broken which is a little bit gutting to me because they're kind of expensive for a playmat. I might end up buying another playmat, but we'll see. Once he gets here, we'll see how he interacts with things and if he really likes the music to like the playmat or whatever, well, maybe we'll get a different one. Um, but yeah, River loved hers and we're definitely using that again. Um, the Stocky Trip Trap, I have a love-hate relationship with this. So many people swear by the Stocky Trip Trap. We got one with Riv, we used it with Riv, we loved it because the, when they first start sitting up and eating, like six months, when they're first supporting themselves, the actual baby chair is quite snug around them, so it's quite supportive of them. And you know when they're still a little bit wobbly, like they'll reach forward and, and reach for something and they're still a bit like, ooh, like just, you know, kind of getting there um, with learning how to sit up and eat they i feel like a lot of high chairs that are made for bigger kids are too big for them whereas this was really supportive really comfortable she was really happy sitting in it we loved it for that stage but i have to say as soon as she was able to sit up in a chair 
then we just got rid of the car, we got, not the car seat, the um, high chair because it's cumbersome, it's massive in, in your kitchen. The thing with the stocky trip trap, they do last for like until an adult seat, but I'm not gonna lie, like we didn't really want it as, as a seat at our table in terms of she was capable of sitting on a normal chair and tall enough to sit at the table, so we didn't need it, if you know what I mean. So we will be using that again. Whether or not it was worth the money, the jury's out. If you use them for like, the full duration till your kid is like 12 which some people do my brother still has his i think for for willow who is five um and they use it like as a chair but we just didn't so for us i think it's better just to have a uh, like cheaper one because they are expensive but we'll be using it again because we have it and then i will probably resell it or donate it um the nuna leaf two nuna things actually that i really really rate and would 100 percent still recommend actually no one that i really really rate which is the travel cot um which is the senna air without a doubt the best made travel cot i've encountered in my time as being a parent so easy to put up so easy to take down which travel cots normal travel cots are like i've had some fights with them <laughs> like they're so hard to take down we bought a cheap one initially, it was so uncomfortable she didn't sleep in it um, and then we went for the Nuna Senna and we ended up getting the small one and the big one for different purposes when they're tiny and you're travelling, the smaller one is so brilliant because it's so much smaller and lighter weight um, but they do grow out of them faster so if you just want to buy one and be done with it and depending on how many children you have, that's the best one so good expensive but worth it you can use them as like a playpen etc as well they have the like raised um kind of bassinet feature for when they're little and then they drop down for when they can kind of stand up and try and climb out very very good travel cots and then we also have the nuna leaf which is the chair which river loved for about a month and she like it was her favorite place to be when she was about two months old she loved it and then she kind of moved on from it. We've kept it because it is actually probably one of the best looking baby chairs there. We never had a baby born or kind of a bouncer. It's like a motorized one and it goes like this. It's very like calm. Um, we'll see what the new baby thinks. He might not like it, but we've kept it because it's nice and expensive for what it is and heavy to move, but it looks nice and Riv liked it. So um, we do have that again for this one. I'm pretty sure they still sell that. The other thing we've kept are the Tommy Tippy nappy bins. I feel like nappy bins are kind of a love-hate thing. Some people love them and swear by them, other people don't. We loved ours. We change them every kind of maybe three days. And if there's ever a really stinky nappy, we didn't put it in the nappy bin, we took it straight outside to the outside bin. But we had one upstairs in our room for night night changes and one downstairs in the kitchen for daytime changes. And we just really liked them and we found the whole like twisting system we never had an issue with them smelling again like i said we changed them twice a week so they would never be like and they're not that big so there would never be like a massive load of nappies waiting to go out um i think that's like a, a common kind of issue with people with nappy bins is they get really stinky because if they're bigger you fill you carry on filling them up before you empty them and then they get really smelly but um they worked for us and the like twist system with the plastic bag is actually really good because we would then just untwist them at the end and then it would all come down into like a small compact plastic bag. Um, we actually also changed to the biodegradable plastic bag inserts as well. Um, and they've changed the design a little bit since we first had them but they're essentially kind of the same system. Um, the other thing, our changing mats, we never had changing table for Riv really and it, we had like one in a cupboard that I kind of set up, we never used that, we never had like a proper changing station table, we just put the changing mat inserts on top of our chest of drawers in our bedroom and it worked really well. So we've kept the same changing mats, I was so tempted to get one of those really lovely Oli Ella, is it Oli Ella? Um, basket ones and then I was like no it's like 60 pounds I don't need it I've got a changing mat we don't need another one um, so we've kept the ones we had from last time which are kind of like the just traditional plastic covered ones with stars on um, and then you just put a cloth over them so they're not cold and they worked well keeping those um, baby bath we had I think it's called a snuggle a snuggle bath something like that I'll insert a, a close for it that worked really well with Riv it's essentially like kind of like a bucket but with a slanted back so it supports their back and then they put their leg either side of like a little thing to stop them slipping down. Um, it's padded on the back so it's comfortable for them. So it essentially like keeps them not upright but like keeps them like head out of the water and like on like a, an angle like this. You can wash them but it's not using up like a whole bath full of water. I don't know if we'll use it this time but we kept it because Riv loved it. Because Riv obviously has a bath, 
like pretty much every night. We'll see whether he he is going to be in the same bath as her or whether he goes to bed at a different time or we're just going to kind of play it by ear. So we might use it if he has a bath on his own, we'll use it. He might just hop in with Riv or me or whoever's having a bath. So I think that's it in terms of big baby buys of like what we have bought, what we haven't bought, what we're reusing. I hope some of you found this video helpful and just a bit of a catch up um, with me. If you have any other requests, let me know. I am planning on filming what's in my hospital bag, nursery kind of update, and then like a third trimester update as well. Um, so stick around for those if you are up for more baby content, a little bit more beauty content coming your way as well, hopefully before I take a bit of time off post baby, but I will be back. Um, and yeah, hope you're all really well. See you soon. Bye.